In this video, I'm going to look at a catastrophe that can befall you on page one of your novel and show you a way to avoid it happening to you. It goes like this. You spend two years writing your novel. You pour your heart and soul into it. And then it's finished and you send it off to the agent, heart in your mouth, praying. And she regret, she rejects it. And you interpret this wrongly. You, you misinterpret this as confirmation of something you, you always suspected that, that dark secret fear in your heart that you're not good enough. You're not good enough to be a writer and it was an act of presumption to even imagine that you could be. Whereas in fact your novel was actually quite good. It's just that the agent was so overwhelmed with submissions to read that she rejected it on, on the basis of a rookie error she found on page one. So after all that work your no novel never even got read. Well I'm going to give you a template stolen from a rather well-known movie which you can use to avoid this happening to you. So welcome to another instalment in my series on how to write your novel using that most unlikely of writing implements a round Oxford bus ticket. For inspiration we're going to take bus number three down to this place, Oxford's famous Botanic Garden. Now over the years, countless authors and writers have wandered these lanes searching for inspiration. J.R. Tolkien used to love coming here, and it's reasonable to suppose that much of The Hobbit was dreamed up under these, these trees and branches. Now The Hobbit is rather a useful paradigm for what we're discussing here. Because if you remember, Bilbo Baggins was sitting at home wanting to be left alone, didn't want the world to intrude on him. And there was a knock on the door, and during the course of the evening, 13 dwarves and a wizard turned up. And they whisked him away on an adventure, didn't they? A quest to a far-off realm for dragon treasure. And in a way, this is, this is what we do as writers. We try to capture the reader, take the reader hostage on page one, and whisk them away on an enchanted journey. But there's a problem, isn't there? There's a massive problem. And you can see what it is by a recent newspaper article I read. It said that 5% of people admit that they check Facebook while having sex. Well, I think we can all agree that there is an attention deficit or attention span deficit here, isn't it? Attention spans are not what they used to be. Now, this is a problem because when we start reading a novel, we are like a sleeper who awakes up in a strange room. We don't know where we are. We're disoriented and we... We, we need information and the writer has to provide it quickly, urgently. But the problem is, there's a lot of it. You know, what sort of story is this? Where is it taking place? What period, what historical era is it taking place? What genre? The, the writer has to provide all this information. But, but the problem is that it's boring. It's inf backstory, information, exposition. It kills storytelling stone dead. Now in the old days, it wasn't a problem. Writers could take a leisurely approach. They could spend 50, year, 50 pages writing backstory. Robinson Crusoe spends the first few pages talking about his mum and his dad and his brother. And it's a long while before we get to any shipwrecks. Moby Dick begins with a very lengthy exposition on the practice of whaling. But they, they could do that. They could do that in those days because only the leisured classes read novels and they could devote an entire afternoon to, the, to a certain novel they were proposed to read. But those times have gone. So what is the solution? How do we get around this problem? Well, the time-honoured way is to use what we call the hook, which is to say something dramatic and exciting that grabs our attention and holds it sufficiently long for the writer to inject some information into the story. A wizard turning up at your door is a hook. And the funny thing about a hook is it makes backstory palatable. Richard Ford's novel Canada begins... First I will tell you about the robbery our parents committed, then about the murders, which happened later. Well, this bit is followed by lengthy biographical details of his parents, from paragraphs, pure backstory. Now, ordinarily, we, would, we wouldn't read it, but because it's been preceded by this humdinger, which promises great things to come, we happily read the backstory, safe in the knowledge that there's a good story in the offing. The hook can be a great opening line, such as this one. I write this sitting in the kitchen sink. 
or it can be a dramatic revelation, such as in Geoffrey Eugenides, The Virgin Suicides, which, where we learn on page one that five teenage girls committed suicide in the same house. Or it can be mere linguistic flamboyance. C.S. Lewis begins the novel The Voyage of the Dawn Treader with the words, There was a boy called Eustace Clarence Grubb, and he almost deserved it. So how do you find your hook? Well, many writers, I think, spend a lot of time trying to think up a great opening line or a dramatic opening incident. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it does contain a potential pitfall for the unwary. You can be tempted to write a brilliant line that doesn't quite fit your story. And then you spend the precious opening section trying to hammer it into shape so it does fit. A better way, if you can't think of a good one, is to get your hook from the novel you haven't written yet which is to say, your first draft. If you keep an eye open in the process of writing it, you will come across all sorts of lines and situations that will make great hooks. And they will be authentic too, and yeah, organically derived from your story and not bolted on. You will remember at the beginning I promised you a great template for an opening hook. Well, here it is. Imagine you are writing a story about a professional poker player in the Old West. He rides into town where there's a high-stakes game about to begin and his horse is stolen. And that is how the story begins. But in the movie from which I've taken my paradigm, it doesn't begin there. It begins with a brilliant hook. And I'll tell you what it is straight after this short commercial break. Do you dream of writing a novel but never seem to find the time? Try this simple tip. Make a chart of 52 columns and 81 rows to illustrate all the weeks of your life. Now colour in the weeks you've already had and see what is left over. Pretty scary, right? Download Gateway to Narnia, my free 10-part email course on how to write your first novel. The link is in the description below. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may, old time is still a-flying, and this same flower that smiles today Tomorrow will be dying. Well, the movie is Maverick with Mel Gibson. Perhaps you've seen it. It opens on, on a rope. and We hear the characteristic twisting sound of a rope under strain. And we pan down and notice that the rope ends in a noose around a man's neck. And that man is Mel Gibson. And then we pan down more and notice that he's sitting astride a horse with his hands tied behind his back. And the rope is attached to a tree branch above his head. So clearly if the horse shies or rears, then Mel Gibson will hang. Then we pull back a bit more, we notice he's surrounded by three bad guys, straight from central casting. And one of them has got a bag containing rattlesnakes, which he throws at the feet of the horse. Now this is already a piece of genius in my view. This is a great hook, but it's what happens next which is the real tour de force. We hear the voiceover of Mel Gibson saying, Well, it'd been a shitty week for me right from the start. Now this is brilliant, it's, it works on so many ways and it achieves the, the absolute most fundal and vital task for any writer in the opening page. It makes us like or care about the protagonist because it's impossible not to warm to a man who comes out with such a preposterous piece of wit when faced with the prospect of being hanged. And it also leads seamlessly into the backstory because he says it had been a shitty week and then he explains his horse had been stolen and he was on his way to a poker game etc. And so not only does it grab our attention and tell us what we need to know about the protagonist, but it also starts on a cliffhanger because not only do we wonder how did he get into that situation, but we wonder how is he going to get out of it. And I think it's a wonderful hook and I would thoroughly recommend you bear it in mind when writing your novel. I mean, by all means, see if you can come up with a great opening hook. But if you can't, don't worry, just trust the process and start writing and let your first draft provide the hook.